Hello everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with Grenoble École de Management, GEM, and we're going to be talking about the MSc in Fashion Design and Luxury Management. Here with us today, I have the pleasure, the honor to welcome the Programme Director, Isabelle Chabou. How are you, Isabelle? Good, very good. Hello, Guillaume. How are you? Well, hello, Isabelle. You're right. I'm, I'm very fine. Thank you very much. And I also have the pleasure to welcome a former student. She just graduated 10 days ago. She's called Marie Pasteur. How are you, Marie? Hi, I'm very good, thanks. I'm very happy to be here. Well, I'm happy to welcome you as well. You're both here to answer my questions, but first we're going to start with the pitch. So the pitch is a 60 second talk in which you're going to have to tell us everything that we need to know about uh, your program. Are you ready, Isabel? Yes, I am, Guillaume. Thank you. Okay, so I'm Isabel Chabou, the MSc uh, Program Director for Fashion Design Luxury Management. The program uh, combines three key aspects, I will say. First, the recruitment, international recruitment. We have between 10 and 15 nationalities on each campus and with different backgrounds. So I have people with uh, literature background, language, uh, finance, economics. The, third, the second point is the courses. We have core management skills courses and we have specific uh, classes uh, such as sustainability in design, fashion, innovation and technology, digital marketing. And the third point is uh, experience or experiences. So we have, for example, a study trip to a European fashion capital when the situation allows or a live business case. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. You had like eight seconds left, but I guess we're good. We're going to start with the first question. Uh, do I really need an MSc in fashion, in fashion design and luxury management in order to work in the luxury industry? Well, I would say it brings exposure to the to the industry uh, because one of the objective in this MSc is to give a 360 uh, degrees exposure. So we cover uh, topics such as fashion, design, luxury. So, for example, there is an industrial design course. So students who may be interested more in art movement design could be interested. Uh, we have lots of professors who talk about luxury. They had a career in luxury or they work for luxury companies, some other in the fashion business. So it gives really a broad, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, perspective uh, combined with experience or so life business case. For example, this year we had a life business case with L'Oreal Lux. So it was on cosmetics. Uh, students also have a module called uh, luxury sectorial analysis. So they decide to focus on one sector of the, the industry that they are particularly interested in. May, uh, it may be wine and spirits, it may be cars, it may be uh, handbags, it may be watches and jewelry. So, as I said, you have a very broad uh, uh, perspective, plus lots of interactions with uh, professionals. We have fairs, we have career events, we have webinars. Since the first lockdown, I organize monthly webinars on different topics. So I think it's a real, real plus uh, in terms of expertise and knowing the current challenges uh, that are today uh, impacting this sector. What about you, Mari? How do you feel about uh, this whole MSc? Like, did you, did you pick that subject uh, knowing that it would be that useful before applying? Mm, in my point of view, I think the luxury industry is really specific and um, you really get to be passionate about it if you want to work within it. And um, I think when you're applying to an internship or to a job, uh, if like the employer so that you're already doing a master um, in this subject, it clearly shows that you have a, an interest in the luxury and that you have like serious knowledge and skill about the, the, the sector in general. So. I think it's quite important and um, I think in general the, the brands and the maison they, they really like they really appreciate when when they see that we know about them and we know how the luxury industry works. Well thank you for making that clear for me clear for me. Um, let's dig a little bit, bit more into the details. How many students do you admit and what's the international mix? 
Okay, so it's maximum 40 students per group, maximum. Mm -hmm. um, so far we had between 10 to 15 nationalities in each group. So we have uh, Lebanese students, we have German students, we have Indian students, we have Chinese students, we have uh, um, French students from many, many countries, depending on the years. Uh, we can have from um, Taiwan, from yeah, many different countries with different backgrounds as well. The objective is really to make it inclusive. Uh, so we uh, provided they meet the criteria which are explained in the website so having a bachelor a certain level of English because the, the MSc is delivered in English uh, and they have passion as Marit said uh, for me it's very important the motivation is one of the key elements I prefer someone who is passionate who have a really a keen interest maybe had done an internship already but not necessary but at least uh, is very uh, interested in this sector because it's a very very competitive hyper competitive multicultural and um, lots of curiosity as well I would say uh, curiosity to learn uh, the new trends uh, the heritage as uh, uh, Mary mentioned it for example knowing the brands is key uh, each brand has its DNA and they are very different if you talk about Hermès or Christian Dior or Louis Vuitton they are completely different so I think, uh, they are very different. Yeah. Marie, what is your pro your academic background? Sorry, what, what did you do before? Um, before um, starting the MSc, uh, I did a bachelor in languages because I, I was really interested into being an international um, environment, and uh, but I really wanted to focus more into into luxury. All right, and that's why you've decided. So you, there was like 40 people. Uh, I know you kind of answered the questions, but what's the typical student profile here? Is there a typical uh, student profile? And do you require any specific qualification or base knowledge? I know you said like mm -hmm. just having an interest to be keen on luxury and fashion, mm -hmm. but any other details? Okay, so no typical profile. As I said, uh, you can have any bachelor. So some have a bachelor in economics, in accounting, in language. Uh, they have studied uh, uh, IT or it could be really different, literature, psychology, uh, but uh, they need to be passionate. I repeat what I said. So either they had done an internship already or they had, they had been, uh, for example, sales assistant for uh, a maison or they are just following a MOOC or they can demonstrate that, I don't know, they had a uh, passion for trends and for years they have been collecting and following or fashion shows. And when I speak with them, if I have an interview with them, they can explain me who are the key players, uh, uh, which maison they like in particular and explain me their knowledge. So no typical profile mostly curiosity, passion, storytelling. Uh, just to give you an example, a couple of years ago, one of my students uh, had a, maybe a slightly lower academic um, average uh, in terms of academic grades, I mean, but he was passionate about sneakers and streetwear. And he did an internship at Soconi at New Balance. And his dream was to work for uh, a sneaker company. And nowadays he is uh, working for Nike in the headquarters in the Netherlands. And I believed in his story, it was really like like, uh, and he had maybe a lower uh, average, um, he had lower uh, average grades, but he was working as a sales assistant 20 hours a week. So for me, that was really more important because he was used to deal with uh, clients and maybe the time he was spending in the, in the store, of course, he could not spend in. So I just gave him his uh, change and he took it and he's really super happy. And now he achieved his dream. So. Yeah, very interesting. Like you had the soft skills and it's about, Absolutely. It's about the soft yeah, skills yes. and not specifically the hard skills. Absolutely. And it leads me to the next questions. What are the management skills that are specific to the luxury industry? Um, and how are they different from skills needed in other industry? Because like you just said, you just mentioned a story where you were looking for qualities, uh, management skills, soft skills. So which are those that makes the luxury industry so specific, so unique? Okay. So 
we need common, uh, I would say, management skills. This is why we have uh, accounting, corporate finance, uh, strategy, marketing. But then we have uh, courses on principles of luxury, management of uh, luxury brands. We have uh, sustainable fashion in design and luxury. We have legal context of fashion and design, because for example, you have counterfeit, you have uh, uh, lots of things. So you need to learn those specific uh, elements. And this will complement I would say uh, the the core skills uh, they know about like brand DNAs, a brand with heritage, and uh, they learn about um, also innovation and technology in the creative industry. Uh, so we try to really give them all those skills. But as you said, I think soft skills it's super important. The way you behave, the attitudes you have, the etiquette, what I call the etiquette. Now it's very very important. Uh, uh, a very luxury way to say behavior, <laughs> etiquette. All right, we got it. Marie, <laughs> Marie, did you develop any like now that you've graduated? Did you feel like all those improvements mm -hmm. that you could add to your personality and like the tools that you had in order to get like a good a good job? at the end of it? Mm -hmm. um, I think this master, like I learned a lot from this master, like how to behave. And um, also I really improved my capacity of adaptation because uh, as Isabel said, we are like, I think in my class, we were 15 different nationalities. And when you got to work with different people from other countries, you, you, all, you will be faced also like a different control, culture and different management. And uh, I think I really learned a lot from this. And um, yeah, I think in general, um, you learn also how to um, approach uh, luxury in general and how to be really curious about everything. And uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to quote your program director. You said, if creativity, innovation and culture define you, come and join us. Um, my question is, do I need these qualities or will you teach me those? So both. <laughs> okay. The prerequisite is to be curious. And, okay, okay. Uh, that's I always tell my students, be curious. Uh, since the pandemic, uh, the first pandemic, well, the first lockdown in France in March 2020, I created a series of webinars and I call them Be Curious, Learn from Passionate Professionals. So even if they are not they do not specifically have a knowledge at the at the beginning being curious so reading uh, making press release because the industry is evolving very fast uh, today we are going toward digitalization everywhere so you have to be aware of that uh, china is the biggest biggest market and so you, the the chinese customers expectations may not be the same as some others as uh, marie mentioned um, the cultural differences so uh, effectively they can be creative initially but if not they will become they will become cur they are curious uh, innovation because it drives also the changes uh, no one could believe that uh, 20 years ago that nowadays we could have uh, uh, to buy online uh, luxury products have digital experience and things like that before everyone thought you have to go to a store you have to touch you have to get you uh, retail you experience exactly exactly so I think you have to be really uh, open-minded curious uh, to uh, follow this path and understand it and it's a very fast changing industry so the objective in the master is really to to keep the students uh, knowledge up to date with all those changes sustainability digitalization uh, second hand for example uh, all those aspects uh, which are changing uh, very very fast and so then they can embrace those uh, challenges when they join companies and all right so you are either you are creative innovative and cultured jem mm -hmm. will give you all those qualities, whether you have them or not, whether you bring them or not. But first, we're going to head to the cliches. So the cliches are a preconception and like ideas that you could have or might have had before applying when you say luxury, when you say fashion, when you say design and you say Grenoble. What would be the first cliche that comes to your mind? Um, maybe it's just for girls, okay? Girls love uh, fashion. They think about the runway uh, fashion shows and and they just see the sparkling uh, aspects of I, it. I agree, I agree. <laughs> so it's not just for girls. Uh, even if we have 
many, many girls on board, but I would welcome, I would be so happy to have more boys. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, last year we had many more boys on board and they all found uh, internships and they are very sought after. So if you are a boy also, <laughs> don't hesitate to apply. There are plenty of opportunities uh, in the fashion, luxury uh, and design uh, uh, industry. All right, the men, the men got the message. Marie, what would be your cliche? What would be the first thing that comes to your mind, the first preconception? Um, before entering the master and when I applied to it, uh, the first cliche that I had in mind is that, okay, I'm gonna arrive in the master and I will see only like girls with Chanel bags, with like a really like fashion show every day when going to class. And uh, yeah, I really had this cliche in mind, which could also apply to the luxury industry in general, but it was false because everyone like, like was super friendly and like we, we were like really having people from different backgrounds and it was not just about like Chanel bag and everything. <laughs> well, so you don't need to have a sh your Chanel bag in order to apply and in order to work in the luxury industry. Well, that's reassuring. Thank you, Marie, for making that clear for all of us. Um, maybe Isabel, you want to share with us one last cliche before we start again with the questions. Okay, so it's an international uh, MSc, so everything is in English while well, the courses are delivered in English, but French um, is really, really key. So if you don't speak French when you, uh, you join the MSc, you need to learn French, mostly if you want to find an internship uh, in a French maison such as uh, Hermès, Chanel or Dior. The level of French required is really, really high. So it means like from D1, you have to learn French. So even if you don't need to speak French when you join, you really have to learn if you want to have the chance to join a, a French uh, maison with uh, an important French culture. Okay, the French touch in the luxury industry still exactly. remains. It does, it does, it's absolutely. Good, it's good to know. <laughs> um, well, we're going to go back to the questions and dig a little bit more in the courses. Uh, so, well, you have three different campuses, all both three. We'll talk about that a bit later. So you have Paris, Grenoble, and hopefully Singapore. Um, do I need to go, can I go to the three of those? Do I have to pick only one? Is the course experience in each of these cities the same? And would you would you recommend me a certain city based on the type on the type sorry of industry I want to work in? Okay, so that's uh, three questions I'm yes, aware. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so effectively we have Paris, Grenoble so far. Uh, we hope to open uh, Singapore uh, in the foreseeable future, depending on the on the sanitary situation. So maybe uh, 2022. Uh, so the program is exactly the same in all campuses. So it does not depend on where you want to work, uh, more fashion, more design. Okay, the program is exactly the same uh, in each campus. Um, what was the other question? Sorry, you <laughs> can, I, can I do the three of those? I, no. I have to pick uh, sorry, only one? Yes, exactly. So you have to pick absolutely. So as I said before, it's 40 people max in each uh, group. So we don't want to exceed 40 people. So you have to choose. So if you choose Grenoble, it's Grenoble. It's not Paris because you, if you are accepted, you are taking a, a place for Grenoble. So you choose one of them. And when you are accepted, it's for one campus. And... Uh, I don't know if there was any other. And the, la the last <laughs> question is, do you, would you recommend a student to choose, like, I don't know, maybe to work, in, uh, to pick Paris because he wants to work in, in the luxury or in the fashion industry because there's going to be a fashion week there, or to use it just like the, I don't know, maybe the quality of life because you don't have, I mean, you can ski in Grenoble and exactly. you can't ski in yeah. Paris. How would you help them yeah, to choose? It's uh, exactly, you absolutely right. It's more about the quality of life and maybe the cost of living. Uh, Grenoble is much cheaper than Paris, of course, but then um, quite often students from Grenoble, they find internship in Paris or abroad. So whether you studied in Paris or in Grenoble, you don't have any added value, I would say, in terms of curriculum. It's exactly the same. Those who choose Paris because they expect to be able to go to exhibitions, maybe to be in the vibrant uh, Paris city. But those in Grenoble, they are super happy because the campus is bigger, they have a bigger library. Uh, and maybe uh, uh, there are also some companies in the, in the region, uh, the Lyon region, which is about an hour from Grenoble, uh, is famous for heat silk. Uh, near Grenoble, uh, I don't know if you are aware, Guillaume, but uh, Montclair was born near Grenoble. Uh, I wasn't. In, in Monetier de Clermont. Montclair right. comes from the oh, contraction okay. of Monetier Mont 
and Clermont Clair, Montclair. So it was initially a French uh, company before becoming Italian. So we also have some uh, history in terms of Hermes, uh, use lots of silk producer from the Lyon region. So whether you are in Grenoble, Paris, and later in Singapore, uh, you can work in fashion, luxury, design, and you have the same curriculum. Well, I think Montclair was like the slam version of, of Clermont, you know, like the Verlon <laughs> in French. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Marie, which, uh, which campus did you choose and why did you, did you choose the campus you're in or you, you were in? In the Grenoble one. And uh, I really um, appreciated it. I didn't have any regret not going to Paris. I think it's a really nice um, city and you really have like international um, uh, environment in Grenoble. And uh, I chose Grenoble in particularly because I didn't want to go to, to Paris um, like when I started it because I, I knew for sure that I would end up in Paris by doing my internship there. And um, I think it's also nice for um, international people who never came to France to have also like a, a smaller entry in France and starting with Grenoble and then going to Paris. And what's nice also is when you're um, in the Grenoble campus, uh, you will also have the, the possibility to do your study trip in Paris. So um, in the end, it's also like uh, balanced. Okay, yeah, well, you mentioned the study trip. Thank you, Marie, you're giving my next question. Uh, students <laughs> will take part in a study trip uh, of one week in one European fashion capital. Which city is it next year? And uh, what will the student be doing during that journey? Okay, so usually the grown-up students go to Paris for one week. Uh, the objective is to do a behind the scenes uh, study trip, meaning that we try to organize company visits, uh, company talks, they meet managers of companies, HR um, or talent acquisition managers. We try to go to museums when they are open to see exhibitions. So they have a mix of uh, cultural activities, visits of companies and speeches. Uh, for the Paris students, we usually go to uh, Milan uh, and same thing, so behind the scenes visits and uh, so next year this is what we plan, but of course it depends on the sanitary situation. So we just, um, with the grown-up students, we just uh, had our first digital study trip last week <laughs> because okay. we couldn't go to Paris. We were supposed to go to Paris last week, so we organized lots of conferences. And in fact, it went uh, very, very well. Students loved it. Uh, it was above expectations uh, because I found a passionate people. Um, for example, there was um, one uh, um, uh, film uh, editor and he, uh, he is doing or he did and he's still doing a, a campaign, a advertising campaign for luxury houses. So Lancôme, Dolce Gabbana. He did the last uh, fashion show for Dior in uh, Le Palais des Glaces de Versailles. So he explained everything about also the relationship with uh, the creative director, the agency, how you film, everything. So it was also very interesting. It's once again, it's to open the mind of the students. So we had a, a meeting with a Louis Vuitton talent uh, manager. So she spoke about retail. We have someone from Montclair who spoke about Montclair, the culture. But so it's always very different topics. And yeah, so next year, Paris, Milan, or maybe digital study trip. <laughs> well, like you said, like digitalization is like one of the, the main um, mm. target, like really like a big aspect of the, the future of the luxury industry. So it was like putting that into perspective straight okay. away. Okay. And okay. speaking of which, um, do you offer classes on the use of technology and AI, and AI, sorry, in the luxury industry? So what does Grenoble okay. Color Management do for that digitalization? Okay, so we have a module called uh, Innovation and Technology in the Creative Industry. So students work really on, on these aspects. And for example, if I'm not mistaken, Mary, uh, uh, I think you have to interview uh, someone who was in charge in innovation in the creative industry. So then it's very interesting because they can learn about the process. Uh, we can have conferences. So for example, last year we had conferences on uh, fashion tech 
Uh, and then, for example, this year we have this live business case with, uh, with L'Oréal uh, Lux. Next year it's going to be with another company, maybe. Um, and we talk about AI because they use also AI uh, to try to, to predict uh, the demand, to forecast sales and so on. So it could be in different, um, uh, I would say, different courses and, and, and we use Ourselves, uh, we Gem invested heavily in what we call high flex technology, which allow now to have students in class, some students in class and some students uh, online. So we have uh, two cameras, and it can be like a selfie. You can reverse the camera, so either it's on the professor who is delivering the class, or it could be on the students and the, the people who are online. They can see the class as if they were in the classroom. The professor can just move and uh, so it's no, it's just amazing we started uh, on february the 8th so students really enjoy it this is why i'm here because we are doing using it and so i think students are used to also using technology plus all the content they have in the different modules and assignment they make yes maybe mary you could give us uh, your student experience because we had a professor's perspective yeah. and maybe you could give us like how how it went for you and how how useful it was. So as uh, Isabel mentioned, we had an innovation technology class and uh, I remember it was really interesting because um, in the luxury industry, innovation is really part of the of their values. And I remember um, during my group work, we were focused on uh, augmented reality and how uh, different maisons and brands are using augmented reality to provide a new experience to their customers. So for example, um, I remember uh, working on uh, watch watches brands and also jewelry brands. So you can try on uh, the product directly thanks to augmented reality. And uh, we also had to to go to, to challenge also this, um, this already existing strategy and how we could go further with uh, innovation in general. And I think it's quite important and uh, specific to, to the luxury. So it was very interesting. Well, thank you. That was very clear, very precise. I could picture you working in augmented reality. Uh, we talked at the beginning of this interview, how, uh, I mean, what you were looking for in students and what does it take for a student to be successful in this program? So once you've been accepted, how do you have to behave as a student in order to make sure that you will have good grades? So hard work. <laughs> There's lots of uh, group work. Uh, I think uh, Marie mentioned at some point that you have to work with people from different countries, different culture, which I think is super interesting. So we try to mix the nationalities uh, so they get used to working with people uh, uh, of different uh, cultures, different countries. So I would say we require the student to be very proactive. So they always have uh, articles to read in advance, preparation to do. So the more prepared they come to class, the better it is, the more interaction there is into class. So I would say, yeah, get prepared, work on a timely basis to submit your assignment. Uh, be curious. Once again, I repeat and uh, it again, uh, open-minded. So try to do readings, extra readings, press releases, uh, there are lots of content online right now, so hard work in general, I would say, and, and, and yeah, attending classes. It's compulsory to attend classes, of course. Uh, maybe I Makes should sense. mention, but students usually enjoy because they can share and discuss with and The more they prepare, the, the more interaction there is during class. And we use what we call active pedagogy. So which means it's not the prof delivering something and they listen, it's more like discussions and things like that. So if they prepare, they can interact, they can refer to some experience they have before, to readings they did or something. So. And once you've graduated, how will you help a student find a job and what type of job will they get? Okay, so before graduating, they have the opportunity to do an internship. So after the first uh, year, which is the academic uh, part, we, we call it the taught part. So it's one academic year. After they can do an internship, uh, so six months maximum. So usually this is what they do. And once they graduate, uh, of course, they can uh, uh, either join the company they did the internship for, or they look for another company. Or uh, So gaining experience is key in this industry. Uh, Marie, for example, she did an internship at Longchamp. 
uh, in PR, so you can speak about that. And then she did an internship. Uh, she did a, a limited time uh, contract, I think, at uh, Ruinard. And uh, so there are different opportunities which can also allow you to, to test and to uh, uh, try different uh, sectors of the industry. And, and then we help them with uh, posting, uh, of course, uh, job offers, internship offers through our career department uh, website, but also on LinkedIn. I have lots of uh, contacts with different uh, companies. And so I also share uh, offers. We have created also a, a LinkedIn group on fashion and luxury in which we share content and offers. And now we have a bigger and bigger network. So they also uh, uh, come back to us and, and, and maybe Marie, you can talk about your experience at Women at Dior. Yes, I was going to ask you, I mean, uh, Longchamp, Ruinard, mm -hmm. Women at Dior, maybe you need to tell us how, how did that happen? How did the school help you make that happen? Uh, to be honest, I had also great support from uh, from Jem. Uh, I remember spending a lot of hours at the Curie Center. So it's a department where um, people are dedicated to the student to help them improve their skills for example, for interviews or for cover letters or how to apply and also to determine what kind of job you, you want to do because sometimes you arrive in a master and you don't really know what you, you want to do after it. So um, I remember when I had my, like the, 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 the mail for uh, having an interview at Longchamp, I went directly to the career center so we could do um, a simulation of interview and uh, I think it's really nice to have this kind of support all along uh, the two years and even after. And um, for uh, Women at Dior, it was the same because um, Jem is partner of, um, of Women at Dior. So you can directly uh, apply um, to, to this program thanks to Jem. And uh, I think it's a really nice opportunity and uh, you got to know even more about the luxury industry. And um, yeah, I think we really have a, a big support from Jem. One last question for you, Marie. What's the work-life balance like uh, for students of this course? And did you have time to be part of a student organization? I think you asked about like the qualities you have to get for this master. And I think organization is really a key, uh, a key factor for this master, because um, if you're not, it will be hard to, to handle the classes, the assignments, the group work. But if you're able to, to manage the priorities, you can totally uh, enjoy also the, the student life and you can also like be part of different associations because JEM has um, a lot of different associations you can take part in and um, I think it's totally doable and you really have to to learn at least if you're not organized yet but if you do it won't be a problem. Well I did see, <laughs> I, I did see uh, your program director nodding at everything you said <laughs> Like precisely, I think that it was <laughs> very, very much likely to be like that. Uh, well, thanks to the two of you. Time flies. We only have two minutes left. Let's go to extra time. So extra time is two minutes in which uh, I'm going to give you e one minute each and you're going to have to tell me to tell us uh, one last thing that you want us to know or maybe something that you have already said, but you want to emphasize on it. Maybe Maria will let you start to be the first one to like, what would be the, the last thing you want to say, your, your minute, the last one? Mm -hmm. um, I think I would like to highlight like the study trip because for me it was really a unique experience and I really have great memories about it when I think about my, about my master. Um, I think you got to live um, experiences that you're, you will not have in your daily life and uh, you will get to know like so many things about luxury brands and to visit really incredible um, maison and to also get to know uh, managers and people working in the industry and i think it's really nice from from jam to organize this study trip and also to include students uh, in the organization perfectly clear crystal clear thank you murray isabel your last your yeah. last word in this so interview to build on what Marie said i would say uh, emotion 
and uh, emotion through uh, maybe the study trip. Uh, you mentioned the friendly atmosphere. I think that in our group, uh, it's uh, there's a really a very good atmosphere. They all get to know each other and share lots of things. So I think emotions and luxury is a world of emotions. So we try to passion. Uh, I would say again, uh, interest, keen interest, being open-minded, and just to maybe to conclude, uh, yeah, I will encourage uh, the applicants to read as much as they can about the industry, maybe about one sector in particular, to really uh, uh, gain as much knowledge as they can. And uh, if they want to, to maybe uh, get in contact and have more information, they can contact me via LinkedIn or Instagram. And uh, I also write myself articles about the industry, so I share them. And I would say really be curious, try to read as much as you can on this uh, industry, watch videos, and now you can visit exhibitions online. You can have, uh, there's so much nowadays, it's very important to, uh, yeah. All right, curiosity then. So, yes. Okay, perfectly clear. Thank you, Isabel, for your, thank for your you, last Guillaume. words. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Marie, mm -hmm. as well. Uh, uh, well, uh, we're going to leave on that quote, on your quote. You said, this MSc program provides students with a unique exposure to the world of fashion design and luxury brands. So if you want to discover that uniqueness, just come and join GEM. Thanks to the two of you for answering my questions. And for the people watching, I hope to see you soon on Computational.